Perfect. Thanks. And uh, so nice to see you again, Kim. Uh, uh, lucky for me, have had uh, many interactions with you, and I think that's that's fantastic. So I'm just going to share my screen here. Um, apologies. Here we go. Okay, so everything should be up on the screen, and uh, happy to start this this discussion with everyone. Um, so first off. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for uh, all the presenters for sharing their knowledge, um, some great presentations. Thank you for sharing your stories and, and thank you for the opportunity uh, to join and, and share our story with program development, especially within the inclusion space and the development of physical literacy. Um, so as Kim mentioned this afternoon, I'm going to speak to you uh, about one of Ability Center's programs, the Academy for Student Athlete. Uh, development, also known as ASAD, um, and how we've linked it to the development of physical literacy for high school age student athletes of all age uh, of all abilities, um, and our plans to introduce this program within the Northwest Territories through conversations with Horston uh, within the next year. Uh, so before we begin, I've shared my text on the screen. Um, I am joining you this afternoon from Whitby, Ontario, uh, where I both live and work. So I want to acknowledge that I'm located on the homeland of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island, members of the Great Anishinaabe Nation. We recognize and honor the Mississauga peoples as the traditional stewards of the land and the dish with one spoon wampum belt agreement. We all share a single dish, Mother Earth. All people sharing the land are to limit the resources they take, leaving enough for others now as well as those in the future. We have a shared responsibility to ensure the dish is never empty. This includes taking care of the land and all beings we share it with. Um, as Kim mentioned, my name is Kelly Casper. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I am the Director of Sport and Recreation at Ability Centre. On the screen uh, to the left of my name is a picture of our building, uh, as I mentioned in Whitby, Ontario, um, a large recreational facility. Um, but our, our organization just isn't about the building. Um, Ability Centre is the only not-for-profit organization in Canada with a comprehensive approach to inclusion and accessibility. So the image on the screen is our 125,000 square foot facility where we engage with members. We run a fitness facility, we run multitude of programs, whether it's sport and recreation or arts or employment, um, and a number of uh, community rentals that come in. But at the end of the day, it's just a building. The doors get locked and the lights go off. What's unique about our organization is, is that we use this facility as a community hub to bring uh, all members of our community together and as a research lab and as we like to call it our inclusion incubator. So this is where we develop uh, programs in concert with partners and, and members of the community so that we're, we have a focus on uh, advocacy on inclusion issues and, and research that really helps us develop these innovative frameworks that have the capacity to grow and be scaled across our province of Ontario, as well as across the country as a whole. As I mentioned, two kind of unique pieces about our organization. One is the fact that we have an internal research team. And this internal research team helps all of our program facilitators to make informed decisions about the needs and the gaps within our community, but also to provide an evidence-based approach to program development and implementation. So ideally, we decide our impact and then we work collaboratively with our research team to develop a model that meets that impact, but also assesses and shares in that story. The other really unique piece about us is our dedication to the co-development and co-design of every single program and resource we develop. So we work with people with lived experience, or as we like to call it, experts by experience, who understand their own landscape. So whether that means moving programs across the province, across the country, uh, or working with diverse populations, people know their own landscape. They know their own needs, they know their own communities, and they know the barriers that they've had to overcome in order to access programs. And this is how every single program that we run is developed, delivered, and evaluated. So we've talked a lot about physical literacy and, and I'm not gonna dive into the, the definitions again, 
Um, on the screen, I've got uh, a piece of a quote from Margaret Whitehead uh, talking about physical literacy being the gateway to being active for life. So we've talked about the components. We've talked about motivation and competence, physical competence, knowledge and understanding. But what we want to talk about is when we're talking about physical literacy, the thought that it encompasses the skills, attitudes and lifestyle habits uh, needed to engage in active living over the lifespan. And that active living can look a number of different ways. It can be in our traditional sport categories. It can be an unstructured play. But there's also this ability to translate those learnings into our everyday movements, into the environment, into employment. Um, and, and this is what we want to hold in on when we start to talk about programming from a holistic um, skill development perspective. Now, we've got components. And uh, I don't think Sarah knows this, but she led very well into my slides, um, sharing the image of the arrows going in a circle, identifying um, motivation in red, uh, followed by confidence and physical confidence in blue, and interaction with the environment in green. And I think what's important here is, as she noted, physical competence can't be the most important piece. And we've got to understand that we're working with individuals. And this is where this cornerstone of motivation really comes into play. Um, motivation is thought to be the key element by which individuals are thought to enter this cycle where all of these kind of interplay with one another, uh, creating a movement towards this journey throughout the lifespan. And it's thought to be essential if there's going to be a necessary application and concentration to thrive in each of the other elements of physical literacy development. So what we really want to focus on here is that positive attitude through, uh, towards sport participation. So we want to motivate each of these to work together uh, and in the end, make sure that everyone has a need and a want to be involved in programming. Now let's dive into motivation a little bit deeper here. So when we focus in on motivation a little bit more, there's, there's a little bit more of an enhanced appreciation for effort and improvement and thus um, growing self-confidence and self-esteem. So our goal should be to offer opportunities for success, to nurture interest, and to reignite a drive to capitalize on physical potential. And this is where our conversation today, sharing our Academy for Student Athlete Development model drives from. Having conversations, and I'm sure as many of us have with Thorsten about the development of physical literacy and where that fits, and finding what motivates individuals within the community, finding what that, that that need is so that we can find a way to loop in on an interest of, of being active for life. Now, I do want to note that most times when I'm talking about physical literacy, um, I don't talk about sport specifically, um, but today we're going to use sport as our motivation. So when we talk about physical literacy, it begins with the creation of opportunities. And, and this is the opportunity we we'll wanna drive for those that have an interest on being part of a sport team who have aspirations for high performance um, settings, whether that's at the Olympic Paralympic level, whether it's international games or special Olympics, whether it is post-secondary or whether it's just that community connection to be part of a team, be part of something more. This is what we wanna talk about. How do we create an opportunity that fosters this growth? So we're going to talk about the Academy for Student Athlete Development. On the screen, I'm sharing uh, wording from our vision and mission, but I'm going to paraphrase it and make it sound a lot better than the sentences that are outlined on your screen. So the Academy for Student Athlete Development is a sports academy model that works in partnership with local school boards to integrate sports specific training for aspiring high school aged athletes directly into their school day. So this ensures that students have access to the tools and resources they need to reach their academic, athletic, and life goals, truly unlocking their full potential. Uh, so the ASAD model embodies Ability Center's vision of creating inclusive communities by creating opportunities for student athletes on able-bodied, special Olympic, and parasport pathways with a focus on supporting those who face the greatest social barriers to pursuing their goals. Knowing that a lot of opportunity doesn't exist for our disability community, 
But when we take a look at this intersectional approach, it's finding communities that, if given the opportunity, could thrive in that next stage of development. Uh, the ASAD program centers around the holistic development of each student athlete, building individual plans for each athlete in a dedicated, safe, and inclusive training environment, knowing that these young high school student athletes will one day go on to be our future teachers, doctors, lawyers, coaches, professional athletes. So we believe by showing them how to break down barriers and embodying this, this philosophy inclusion in them, they will value it and take these practices on as they grow up to become the leaders in our society. At the end of the day, our goal is to find what motivates these high school student athletes and provide an environment that fosters their ability to confidently and independently transition to the next phase of their journey in sport, academics, and life. So whether their next goal, as I've mentioned, is sport performance, fantastic. It could also be graduating from high school. It could be moving into the trades. It could be going to post-secondary school. We want to make sure that they've got the tools and, and the doors have been opened for them to continue on to that next phase. Taking the durable traits that they're developing through these programs and applying them across multiple different settings and environments. The next slide is an old slide and uh, the images on the screen I'll describe in a moment. Um, but are one of the first ones we've ever developed. And I'm hesitant to ever update it to something a little bit more modern because it actually shows our full development. So the Academy for Student Athlete Development was launched in Durham region uh, in 2016. So in partnership with the school boards there, uh, we grew our program to uh, include a campus in London, Ontario uh, in 2018. And as I mentioned at the beginning, our goal is to introduce a version of this program in the Northwest Territories next September. What's important when we look at the model is that the student athlete is in the circle at the very center of the page. Everything we do has the student athlete at the center of every decision making process. It's about them. It's about their journey, their pathway, and making sure their needs are met as we grow and develop. And obviously their family support system around them. How do we make sure that the family has what they need to support them? How do we make sure the family's involved in the decision making process? And the family is still close by with our athletes. At the top of the screen, I've got three different colored boxes, and this represents the collaborative approach that we've taken with the ASAD model. So our program framework is one that works in concert with partners and teams of experts from the Canadian sports system, the provincial or territorial sport organizations, and local school boards to develop these programs, which leans on each groups respective area of expertise and strength. So when we talk about our, our, our sports, it is our provincial or territorial or national sport organizations that are dictating what the curriculum looks like, how things are being developed, the type of activities that the student athletes are involved with. They also identify opportunities for coach development. And we'll get into that in a second with community partners. The second is school boards. And this is what's really unique about our academy model is that we work in partnership with the local school boards so that student athletes remain full-time students at their home school. And the program is actually delivered by the local school board certified teachers. So it is not something where we come in with a program and hire our own teachers or we stick everyone completely on virtual learning. We wanna make sure that the academic classroom mimics that of their homeschool environment. The second is, or the third story is performance partners. So looking at, from a holistic development standpoint, we're not looking at just sport, we're looking at all those other little skills and traits that need to be developed that set people up for success later on in life. And when we talk about a high performance environment, high performance doesn't need to just be sport specific. It's how do you become a high performer in life? The last one is the community partners. So this is the facilities that we're, we're renting and using to deliver programs. It is the investment into accessible equipment and facilities to deliver. And as I've talked about with Ability Center's mission, it's that co-development of the program. So what we have is a framework, but how it's developed and delivered changes based on 
the environment that we're in with the people that we're working with. And this is a really unique uh, piece that we're excited to take on as, as we move the program forward is, what does this look like for you? What are the coaches? How do we develop coaches to become role models? How do we create a sustainable model that shows economic investment and sustainability within each region that we grow? Along the side of this model is research and evaluation. So as I mentioned, a part of every single program that we offer, uh, and then our pillars for delivery, uh, academic, athletic, and our physical and psychosocial health at the bottom of, of the screen. So like I just mentioned, three different pillars to the ASAD program, and I want to outline each of them uh, briefly, just so you get a full picture of, of what our program is and how it's developed. Um, so we've got three titles on the screen, academic development, athletic development, and psychosocial development. Psychosocial development is, is key to our success, and, and this is what we want to hone in on is how do we make sure that for those who have aspirations for high performance, they can access the program in their home community. They are still part of their community. They're part of their home school. They are connected to their family and they don't have to leave this home base in order to access um, all these tools and resources that are gonna help them unlock their potential. On the screen right now, I have uh, what looks like a typical semester school day. So along the left panel, uh, we have uh, four different time periods throughout the day, uh, reflective of a four period school day. Um, and then Monday to Friday outlined along the top of the screen. Um, and what we've got here are colored boxes to show the time that the student athletes spend uh, within an academic class in front of a teacher at our ASAP campuses and then a second period of time that is spent um, earning a physical education credit for their sports specific training. Uh, so how we have it set up right now is that three days a week, they're in the gym working on strength and conditioning. Uh, and the other two days per week, we rent out um, sport specific technical training spaces uh, and hire coaches in to deliver this training to the student athletes. Um, technical training could be on ice for hockey players, ringette players. It could be um, on an indoor pitch for rugby or soccer, um, you know, on a basketball court, on a volleyball court, whatever the space we need, uh, our program takes care of. What then happens is after the two periods at ASAD, the student athletes will be transported back to their home school where they'll have two classes um, back in their regular school um, and, and with their, their classmates as a whole. So uh, when we look at our Durham region model, uh, Ability Center is the hub for this program delivery, uh, but currently we're servicing 17 different high schools. So when you look at it, it's a really unique social environment that shifts with the athletes. They're with, um, with their peers within, from a sport environment uh, first thing in the morning, and then they go back with their, their peers outside of sport in the afternoon. What this also lends to is their ability to still remain part of their school community. So whether you want to participate on a sport team, the debate team, music programs, arts programs, whatever it is that you want to do, you're still part of your school community. So what I want to break down uh, briefly for you is, is what the athletic component looks like. So I have two images on the screen. On the left, we have one of our uh, strength and conditioning partners uh, working on a lift with one of our ASAD athletes. And on the right, uh, a few of our athletes and our program participants uh, ready to high five each other from our gym space. Um, we have a blue circle, student athlete, the center of all programming, and then six light blue circles surrounding it, um, which show all the components of our athletic programming. So strength and conditioning, technical training, sports psychology or mental performance, uh, sports medicine, sports nutrition, and obviously the most important uh, as we're talking today, physical literacy. But all of these pieces are embedded into the day-to-day -day environment of that physical education credit that the students are, are working towards. 
When we look at strength and conditioning, um, we uh, deliver this uh, with experts uh, that are um, have been delivering in their, their area, certified to deliver it. Uh, within Ontario, we're really happy to be partnered with the Canadian Sport Institute Ontario, who provides leadership and guidance in the development of program plans that align with long-term athlete development and the sports-specific performance pathways. What we want to do is make sure that this dedicated training environment helps them achieve all of our pillars of, of development, whether it's well-being or academics, athletics, and look at holistic development. So how do we build that base foundation? How do we build the skills and knowledge of what they're doing in the gym so that they can move forward and do this on their own? So this is not a program that people are going to need for the rest of their lives. It's about developing skills to move on and, and take some of these pieces on independently. Um, we offer sport-specific technical streams. So as I mentioned, it could end up a uh, hockey stream, a ringette stream, a soccer stream, a rugby stream, whatever that looks like, getting a team of athletes together um, so that they can work on individual skill development. So we're not trying to create a super team. We're not trying to bring everyone in, put on a jersey and, and beat every other school in the region, what we want to do is work on those individual skills in sessions where they can go back to their home school, their club teams, their provincial teams, territorial teams, whatever that is, as better, stronger athletes, which gives a really cool opportunity for, for leadership. Um, so this is where we work with our, our sport partners to identify coaches and hire coaches to deliver this program. Uh, the other piece that we have is individual athlete development. So this is where we get a lot of uh, figure skaters, swimmers, um, track athletes that will come in and we will work on um, specific skills outside of their field of play. So if their, their sport performance and training is high in their own environment, how do we marry that in with injury recovery or prevention training? How do we work that on um, off off days, training days, deloading um, to make sure that they're having the appropriate time for rest and recovery, but also understanding uh, how their bodies work and, and ways to optimize their sport performance. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's not just about sport and training. It's not just about lifting weights or shooting pucks, shooting hoops, whatever that is. There's a lot of components that come into delivery of the program that are gonna help our, our student athletes. Um, develop holistically. Um, so what we do is we offer monthly sports psychology or mental performance sessions that really focus in on goal setting and understanding optimized training environments, but also creating a support network on how we, they can support one another as peers on an athletic playing surface. Um, and we marry this training with what the coaches and parents have access to so that they know how they can support these young aspiring athletes in their environments. Um, the other one is nutrition and nutrition is a really unique one and, and very unique as we move across different sports streams, understanding uh, everyone's needs and, and what's available. So it's about how to optimize your energy based on your specific diet or, or how you um, how your, your food choices, um, but making sure that your body is prepared for competition. So a lot of what we do is lecture based, but um, we've got an image here of some of our student athletes in a kitchen. It's making sure that they know how to build their own meal plans. They know how to shop if need be for their specific ingredients, and they know how to put this together uh, in meals that are going to support them both at home or even on the road. Uh, physiotherapy and sports medicine, we're really lucky to be working with um, sports medicine clinics in both of our ASAD locations that provide baseline concussion testing or injury assessments on site. So really creating a closed loop of communication between our coaches, our SNC providers, our teachers, our parents, and our sports medicine practitioners to make sure everyone's aware of um, you know, where we're at and how to safely uh, prevent injury, but also return after an injury. Um, so making sure that there's a, a focus on that communication loop. The other piece and very unique to Ability Center is our Include You program. And, and what we wanna focus on is how can we bring all of our student athletes together, 
with Ability Center participants, with other members of the community, or all of our ASAT athletes from multiple locations together so that they can connect and understand and enjoy physical activity together. So on the screen, we've got three different uh, images of our academy program working with Ability Center's Thrive program, which is an adult day program for adults with cognitive disabilities and what they understand and build is an appreciation for the multiple ways people can participate in sport and physical activity. And truly that there is really no wrong way to move our bodies as long as we're there, we're having fun and we're connecting with one another. So let's link this back to physical literacy. And, and that's obviously what we all wanna talk about today. And when we're talking about this space, it's, it's about, like I mentioned, not just high performance training, but the habits that we develop through these environments. It's about physical and mental well being. It's about the friendships and social capital. It's about that sense of belonging within the community that's really going to help us um, in this holistic development. So, well, yes, we want to unlock this potential um, for students to move on to a high performance sport environment. That's fantastic. It's also going to help us develop skills uh, and durable traits that translate into work, whatever that you choose that to be. It's that understanding of inclusion and what physical literacy actually means for our future teachers and coaches. Uh, it's about that connection, that social connection with one another. It's about how we learn um, and translate that knowledge into our day to day practice. Now, what I'm going to tie off with here is, is a few stories from our student athletes throughout the program. And this is what's really unique about our opportunity in sharing their stories and impact is how do we take these, these stories and these learnings from our student athletes and put them in a leadership role to translate that knowledge to others. So when we're talking about, you know, the components of physical literacy, we're looking at existentialism and moving our learnings into multiple different environments. But when we hone in on that concept of monism, it's how do we connect that mind and body? How do we turn that into usable information that we take forth on our day to day environments? Um, and how do we translate that, that knowledge to others? Uh, and this is a really great piece of, of where we're going. And our next step is taking the learnings of the students and developing courses with them, co-developing these courses where they can take a leadership role to teach the next generation of students how they've used this program um, to develop their skills and, and create success for themselves. Uh, so I have a few testimonials here from our students, uh, a long explanation of, of what the environment has, has provided for them. But what I've bolded here is the habits and routines they're learning at ASAD to prepare them for the future. So allowing them to maximize their time, their athletics, and their academics all at once. So the knowledge that these students are getting that it's not just about sport. If they're going to be successful, they have to be successful in their academics as well. Um, the next one is from one of our soccer athletes and recognizing, uh, as, as they say, um, playing soccer helps me to reduce my stress levels and helps me focus. When I'm challenged athletically, I'm more focused academically. So that knowledge of what motivates them, what drives them, but also a stress management tool, which is great, great maturity from a 14 year old in this case to recognize that sport is a way to maintain their, their physical and mental health. Um, he also notes that ASAT is keeping me focused inside and outside of school. So a very unique uh, learning environment that's helping them develop in, in multiple constructs. Uh, last one is, is one of our athletes, uh, a snowboarder, uh, who notes the benefits that they've already seen from the program and how it's taught him how to prioritize education around sport. Um, and doing both successfully is, is, is possible. So a lot of the, the challenges that we face of you can only be good at one thing. It's about time management. And, and for some of these athletes, it's how they manage their day-to-day -day environment in order to see success in multiple um, sex. Trying to keep it to 20 minutes, lots to talk about there, but um, on the screen I've, I've shared uh, my email address. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I will pop it in the chat as well. Um, but like I mentioned, wanna thank everyone for, for allowing me to speak this afternoon.